Happy Sabbath, everyone. Orlando Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church here in sunny Florida, USA, welcomes you today. Um, my name is Teresa Lanoza. I'm your online um, coordinator and host. Thank you for spending time with us at Ofsta SS Online in our media center. If you're watching us on YouTube and or Facebook or our website, church website, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also share with, your, with everyone you know. If you'd like to interact with us live, send us your comments and or questions in the social media of your choice as mentioned. As you know, most of the Sabbath School programs, podcasts, or online studies out there are pre-recorded. But here at Ofsda, we are live. I'm going to be posting comments or questions that are going to be discussed by our panelists. I'd like to remind you, if you don't have a copy of the third quarter lesson for this year in the Crucible with Christ, we have three options for you. One, go online to either ABSG, that stands for Adult Bible Study Guide, .org, or SS, which stands for Sabbath School Net, .org, go to Lessons Current. Number two, find a local Seventh-day Adventist church near you and study along with them. Number three, of course, continue to join us here at Ofsda SS Online. However, please be reminded that we're not a replacement of going to church for worship. So if you're here locally in Orlando, Florida, come to our sanctuary where we have separate Sabbath school classes in English, Tagalog, Visaya, Ilocano, and also Spanish if needed. Today we're on second lesson entitled The Crucibles That Come. At this time, I'll allow me to introduce the panelists. Starting to my farthest right is Professor Sebastian Farrell. Next to him is Brother Red Feliciano. And next to me is Brother Darby Harvey. Harvey. So uh, right now, I think uh, we could ask Brother Darby to lead us in prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning here in Central Florida. We pray that you will be with us in a special way today as we present this lesson to your people online. May each one of us here as we read and study together, may your spirit be our guide. Not only will we be uh, here to teach, but also to learn. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Professor Farrell? Amen. Thank you. Um, so the challenges that we face as Christians, as human beings, can be likened to the experiences of a crucible. Um, and I am a chemist by occupation. And it's, it was kind of, I was laughing really when they started talking about the crucible. But uh, we have given our students crucibles many times <laughs> yes. to do many different things. Um, and when we put the crucible in the flame, we always find the hottest part of the flame. Mm. That's when it actually works. And when we, put, when we place it in the hottest part of the flame, it turns red hot, very, very red. You can see it. Wow. And then what we do is, whatever we are heating, and sometimes it's just to get out an impurity, we only know when it's pure, when we cool the crucible, weigh it, repeat the heating process, cool it and weigh it, and if the weight is constant, mm -hmm. then we know it's purified. All right? Oh, wow. If the weight changes every time we heat it, that means there's some more impurity. Mm -hmm. We need to heat it some more. Alloy. So we heat it to constant weight. And in some sense, our Christian experience is like that. We go through the crucible many times. Mm -hmm. And when we learn what we need to learn from that experience and who has taken us through, then we reach a, a, a level of constancy. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to be talking about. There. The crucibles that come. Yeah. Crucibles in the form of sin. The crucible of Satan. The crucible of purification. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are surprises along the way. So we may yeah. think of it that way as well. So in other words, these crucibles are like melting pots right. or fiery furnace of the three friends of Daniel. That's exactly and then, right. Or lion's den for Daniel himself, uh -huh. right? <laughs> they, they had their own crucible, isn't yep. they? Yep. <laughs> um, and you know, as you're talking, sis, I, I am reminded of um, Thomas Darcy. 
Mm. Um, they say that he is the father of gospel music. Mm -hmm. But I remember reading a story recently about him when he was performing in, in uh, St. Louis at the revival, and mm -hmm. his wife was back in Chicago, pregnant. And of course, she went to, into labor, went to the hospital, and he, while he was performing in St. Louis, he got the news that you had a son, mm -hmm. but your wife is dead. Oh, wow. So that devastated him. Mm. He made it back to Chicago only to find out that it was not just the mm. wife who died, but the son died later as well. Mm. Oh, no. So Darcy went into depression. And when you're depressed because of the crucible, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's very difficult to come out of that stage. Yes. So a friend decided, you know what, I'm going to lock him in a room. I don't know if it was a room like this. He took everything else out and left a chair and a piano. Mm -hmm. And then Darcy went to the piano. He made it eventually. He found his way to the keyboards. And that song that we all know very well, it is well. <laughs> Precious Lord. Oh, Precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me. Wow. So when we go through our crucible like Darcy, right? We may be depressed, we may go through experience different emotions, but ultimately, if we come to the same conclusion as our precious Lord who would be leading us through, this mm -hmm. crucible, all right? So, um, if any of our panelists want to add anything at this point, if not, I'll go straight to Sunday section. So this lesson, the entire quarter, mm -hmm. Professor Farrell, is just so powerful because it's not talking about deep theology. This mm -hmm. is all about practical about Christianity, mm -hmm. you know, which is good. I mean, General Conference has the schedule of, mm -hmm. you know, getting, <laughs> alternating it. We somehow managed to cover the whole Bible uh, for the whole year, mm -hmm. but it's good that they interject, you know, practical applications yeah. of what we read about. All right, well. and if you're listening to us and you're Christian, or you're not a Christian, um, just know that the entire world is gonna go through a crucible, mm -hmm. uh, is going through it. Um, yeah. And Jesus made that plain. When you get a chance, look at Revelation. I'm not gonna read it now. Revelation 3, 10. It tells you, Jesus says, because you have kept the word of my patience, because you have kept the things that I've said, we'll refer to this a little later on, all right? I will keep you from the hour of trial that will come to try the whole world. So if you're a Christian, Jesus is telling us everyone will pass through the crucible mm -hmm. of life. Yep. Everyone is going to have an experience. It may not be as Darcy. It may not be as Paul, right? But we will have our own experiences. And what did Jesus say? He didn't say that I, you're going to come out strong if you listen to Dr. Phil. That's good. <laughs> you know, that might be relevant, right? Yeah. That might be a part of the process. But what he's saying to us is, I will keep you mm. during that time. Yeah. So, so he'll be with us. He will be with us. <laughs> that's, the, that's the important point. So um, Sunday section, let's go there quickly. And this is talking about surprises. Mm. Surprises. Um, you know, a lot of times, as uh, we discussed previously, we think as Christians, when we accept Jesus Christ, we're not supposed to experience these things. Yeah. Why do we think that? I don't know. Uh, anybody, any opinion? Uh, does Christianity insulate me from the trials of life? <clears throat> because if we are supposed to be followers of Christ, that's why we call Christians, right? Mm -hmm. And Christ himself suffered. Mm -hmm. What makes us think that we won't suffer? <laughs> that it's going to be easy peasy. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You know, actually, it, the, your question uh, talks about like the Monday, partly, uh -huh. because usually when you become Christian, <clears throat> Satan will really attack you more to discourage mm. you to become mm -hmm. more faithful mm -hmm. to the Lord. Right. And so you will experience more trials mm -hmm. when you 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 became a, you become a Christian and so we we should not be surprised about mm -hmm. that. Just like what Auntie Teresa said, mm -hmm. Jesus himself suffered. Mm -hmm. And so as followers we can expect that we will be suffering too. Mm -hmm. So so I'm here. go ahead Darby. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking it's uh, it could also be some Christians are under the impression that oh because I'm doing good now that um, good things will happen to me. 
Mm. It's almost like uh, the Eastern belief of karma, you know? <clears throat> like if I'm doing good, good will be returned to me. Mm. But that's not always the case, you know, because as Red mentioned that, uh, you know, we are followers of Christ and, and we, we are fellow sufferers with Christ. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so we should not be surprised is what I'm hearing you say. That's, yeah. that's true. And that's actually captured in Second Peter, uh, First Peter chapter 4, verse 12, right? Our memory verse actually reflects the same thing. So I'm going to read what's written. Actually, I'm going to read also verse 13. Um, it says here, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Mm -hmm. as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, mm -hmm. that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with that exceeding joy. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. So don't, don't be surprised, all right, that you're partaking in what Christ has already shared, what he has gone through what mm -hmm. other Christians have gone through, what the Darcy's of this world have gone through. Paul, Job, and when you were talking right a while ago, I remember Job. Um, and it's not necessarily that you're doing something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. We know that good things and bad things happen to everyone, yep. right? And so Job's friend actually thought that, well, hold a second here, you must have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Job said, I am not opposed, I'm not saying I've never sinned, I've never done wrong, but tell me right now, I've made my right with God, tell me right now what my issues are. Yep. I'm, I, I don't know of anything that I've not confessed to God. Mm. Is God bringing back the sins of my youth? Mm -hmm. I know as a young man what I did. Mm. Okay? And so they were saying, what they didn't realize that there was a wager. Satan was saying to God, Job is only serving you because look at all the, the guy is richer than Bill Gates. Yeah, put a hedge around him. <laughs> Who would not serve you if you make him as rich as Bill Gates or even richer? <laughs> Take away his riches. Take away all those things and he's going to curse you to the face. Yeah. And Job basically adapted. This is the maturity that came out of him. The, the approach that, you know, I came into this world with nothing. Mm. If I live long enough, I would leave this world with nothing. Therefore, my attitude is God gives, God takes. Praise be the name of the Lord. He didn't Amen. know what was going on. Amen. Right? And despite the fact that his own wife <laughs> even told him, it's like, you're still serving your God? Curse him and die. And then his close friends. Well, in the bottom part of Sunday's lesson, mm -hmm. Professor Farrell um, says, and following Satan can appear to bring great rewards. Job, who is righteous yet suffering, illust illustrates this when he asked God, why do the wicked live on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. growing old and increasing in power? That's Job 21.7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So some, uh, in a, a commentary, Professor Farrell said that, uh, could it be that the yoke of Satan is mm -hmm. lighter? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, I struggled with that. Yeah. With Satan, there is no yoke. The yoke is there when Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, because my yoke is easy. Because the yoke is placed there to mentor us, to guide us, to, in Sunday, uh, in Sabbath's lesson, to change us, to develop us, to grow, uh, to let us grow in his character. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Satan does not have that in mind mm -hmm. because his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy, mm -hmm. and eliminate us. So there's no yoke. Yeah, and I think like Satan is offering a short-term yeah. pleasure. That's like right. uh, enjoy now but suffer later in the long term. But, but he, what, will, he will <laughs> even keep the suffer later. Yeah, yeah keep that uh, obscured. Yeah. But what God is offering is that, well, well, temporarily you may experience the suffering and pain, but in the long term, in mm. my perspective of time, which is infinite, that's Amen. nothing compared to the joy that you will be experiencing Amen. later on. Amen. Yeah, amen. So, what uh, time is slipping by quickly. So, let me read a couple of um, passages that will encourage us. Mm -hmm. um, one is taken from Luke 6, 47 to 49. Luke chapter 6, 47 to 49. 
And again, Jesus is saying the same thing about we are going to go through, all of us will go through storms. Whether or not you're Christian or non-Christian, we all face these storms at different times. And this is what it says, all right? So the question is, oh, if that's the case, Lord, how do I stand? How do I survive the storm? Mm -hmm. If you know a hurricane is coming, what do you do? You prepare to survive it, right? Yep. If you, if you leave your tent where the, the, the storm is, it's going to be blown away. How do I survive it? And Jesus says this. Verse 46 says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? In other words, why are you saying that, you know, I'm Jesus, saying all these wonderful things about me, singing about me, praising me, whatever, but you're not doing what I told you to, mm. right? And why is that? And notice what he says, verse 47. Whosoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which builds a house, a built-in house, and dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat, notice his words, the stream beat vehemently, mm. not just a little wind, right? Yeah. Upon that house and could not shake it. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. Then he says, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently. See that? Mm -hmm. Both camps, the stream, the winds, the strife came vehemently. Mm. Those are very strong words. And notice what it says. And immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great, suggesting there was no chance that that house can be rebuilt again. Mm. Right? So Jesus is telling us that, hey, you're going to face um, these vehement conditions, but guess what? Right? If you want to survive, not only should you read my words, but you should do them. Amen. And this is why in Revelation it says, if you do that, I will keep you during the storm because you have kept my words. Amen. Amen. Any other comment? So with the Sunday's lesson, when you say surprises, Professor Farrell, what did the author really mean that as Christians, we need to expect them? Yeah. Right, Brother Red? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and that we shouldn't think that, oh, poor me. Look at this. This is happening to me. This is, nobody else is going through this but me. Right? Just yeah. like what you said that Peter that said, do not think it's strange, strange concerning. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we read the, the, that chapter in, in uh, First Peter chapter 4, right? Mm -hmm. And if you read the, the verses before, Peter said, but the end of all things mm -hmm. are at hand. In other words, what I'm about to tell you is related to the <clears throat> fact that things are wrapping up, right? Yep. Um, be therefore sober and watch and to pray. He says, mm -hmm. you got to pray. You got to watch. You got to be vigilant. Before he started telling us, you're going to be tried, right? Mm -hmm. And then he said something which is strange, you know. You're getting ready to tell some, some, uh, your audience you're going to face a lot of trials. A hurricane is coming, mm -hmm. right? And then he says, above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. Mm -hmm. Wow. But I thought you are going to talk about my trials. Yes, I'm talking yeah. about your trials, but guess what he's saying? Your trials are going to bring scarcity. Mm. And you, some people are going to have, make sure that you're charitable and loving to each other. Yeah. Right? And then says, so, so why are you telling me all this? Don't be surprised. You're partaking in the suffering of Jesus Christ. It says, please don't suffer, um, uh, you know, as a wrongdoer. In other mm. words, if you <laughs> suffer as a wrongdoer, that's not adversity. You're bringing that upon yourself. But if you suffer for Jesus' sake, he's saying, you will be fine. And then toward the end of his discussion, he says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begins at the house, at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? All right? Mm -hmm. So what he's really saying to us, I'm going to tell you something, and it all has to do with what's happening at the end of the world. God is going to hold all of this all of these people who are doing all of these things into accountability. Mm. God is going to judge them. Therefore, as you go through the trial, remember the end, right? Yeah. So it's almost like a lawyer coming to us and say, hey, I'm your representative. Mm -hmm. I'm your advocate in heaven, right? Before you go to court, 
this is going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Satan is going to try to disqualify you as a witness. He's yeah. going to get someone to punch you in the face. He's going to get want someone to spit in you. Are you going to spit back? Are you going to stand up in church? He's going to get want someone to slap you in the face in church. What are you going to do, right? Mm -hmm. If you respond in kind, you have just disqualified yourself as a witness. So the judge yeah. is telling them, before we go to court, make sure you conduct yourself. Have charity. Don't be surprised. This is happening. Satan is behind the scene trying to disqualify you, trying to wage in you, trying to say to the people, hey, he's only serving you because yep. he can get some benefit from you. You slap him, see how he takes off his pack your gloves and just give it to you. Yeah. You spit on him, see how he just uses his, you know. Yeah. And this, this is what he's warning us about. So I've got well, something to add to that. Yeah, go ahead, Darby. Go I was, ahead. Uh, you know, talk about surprises, you know, uh, I've heard it said uh, in multiple pulpits, uh, be careful what you ask for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there are, yes. there, there are Christians who will say, you know, they'll pray, Lord, you know, please, you know, teach me to be more patient. <laughs> Without realizing that God's going to send some things into their lives that's going <laughs> to test their patience, you know. Yeah. And that comes as a surprise mm -hmm. for them because they don't, they're not really, you know, they're expecting some kind of magical fix mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to be patient, but patience is not learned like, like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's learned through experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if God needs to uh, improve your impatience, he's going to send things in your life that are going to test those yeah. th th that patience. It puts you behind somebody who drives so slowly yeah. in the yeah. internet, I mean, the, uh, <laughs> in the interstate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but this lesson is very rich, you know, as uh, that Professor Farrell has already said that Satan is going to try us. So on Monday and Tuesday's <laughs> lesson, but, but foundational that, to that, but I think we're going to discuss that mm -hmm. more on Thursday's lesson, there is that, that assurance that he will be with us. But yeah. I don't want to spoil it. Go ahead, brother. Is that right. okay now? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Professor Farrell mentioned that Satan is behind the scene. Yes. Mm. And so yep. this actually talks about the crucibles of Satan mm. in Monday's lesson. And a good example of that is what Professor Farrell said about Job. Because we mm. know that Satan himself is the one who caused the yep. suffering of Job. Um, on Monday's lesson, it talks about crucibles of Satan. You know, back in the Philippines, when we conduct the youth crusades evangelism efforts, and we have like several baptisms, and like two uh, after like a month, we will visit them and check and ask them, how are you as a new Christian? And usually they will say, well, I face more trials oh. than before when I was a Christian. Wow. Now, yes. like, my friends yeah. would invite me to come during Sabbath, but I can't, and so they will get angry. And so I get these trials and persecution and so on. And so, uh, and, and they know and they expect it because as Christian, we know from 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, be sober. Be vigilant mm. because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know, this verse is written by Peter in the context of responding to <clears throat> Satan's attacks on Christian faith. Mm. And his attack comes in different forms. Mm -hmm. One of them is suffering, inflicting suffering and pain. Mm. And so we should always acknowledge that Satan is there, but like the lesson, the, 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 the teacher's commentary mentioned that some of the Christians now do not believe in the existence of Satan. They say that he is just a mythical representation mm. of, the, of evil, but mm -hmm. the thing is, we Christians believe that he exists, yep. yeah, that real. he's real. But then, let us not focus on Satan. Mm -hmm. Let us not focus on what he can inflict on us. But let us focus Jesus. on Jesus who can save us from him. Amen. In First Peter 5, uh, 10, there is a promise that God has given us. Though Satan is there, and Satan, and God allows Satan to do these things, uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, um, these bad things towards us. He has a promise in First Peter 5, 10, yeah. that after you have suffered a little while, will himself, God himself, will restore you and make you strong, firm, <clears throat> and steadfast. Amen. And so we suffer not because God allows suffering, not because for suffering's sake, but just like what Professor Arl said, we are in a crucible and that helps us, purif it purifies us. 
And so in the long run, after this suffering, we can be made perfect through Christ. Mm -hmm. We can be more stronger and firm and steadfast. And so that is a crucible of Satan. Do you have uh, anything to add about yeah, this? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. I made a note here and that very first question was asked. Um, mm -hmm. Ask yourself, how seriously do I take these words? What things do you do in your life that show whether you take them seriously? Mm -hmm. And I wrote, mm -hmm. uh, and my response to this question was, uh, I don't believe in the phrase, the devil made me do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because that... Uh, because when you always blame the devil, you are not accepting the, con yeah, the responsibility mm -hmm. or yeah. the consequences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of our suffering, uh, sorry, a lot of our suffering can only be blamed on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, ultimately, it is the devil's fault for bringing sin into the world. Mm -hmm. But we have a choice. Do we shelter with God or do we roam where lions lurk? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that seems very yeah. poetic. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as you, as you talk about lion, you know, I actually Googled, when do lions roar? And it was very surprising to me. They said the lions roar usually in the still of the night, mm -hmm. are very early in the morning and it's still dark. And they said the reason for that is when the lion roar, that song can travel as far as 25 miles. Mm. Mm -hmm. And in the stillness of the night, when you don't have you know, the air current moving and whatever and so forth, that means the song is going to go very far. And what the, what, what the devil is trying to tell all the enemies out there, right? Mm -hmm. This is my territory. Yeah. Yeah. Right? This is my territory. Sending a message, right? Mm -hmm. But it rose when? In the night. <clears throat> so Peter is telling us indirectly, hey, guys, it's night. Right? Paul said the, the, the night is almost gone, <laughs> the day is coming. Right? It's night time, and therefore this is the time that the lion, Satan, mm. is roaring. Mm. Be watchful. That is so powerful, Professor mm -hmm. Farrell. That's why <clears throat> Satan is uh, being likened to a, like a roaring, roaring lion, lion, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you see, I heard this from one of the Bible commentary. He says, Satan operates by the love of power. Mm -hmm. You said about the lion, mm -hmm. he, he roars just to declare his dominion over the mm -hmm. land, right? Mm -hmm. God, however, operates by the power of love. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Right. That's beautiful. I know it's just a play of words, and but... Intimidation too, isn't it? It's like I look at the boxes sometimes, before the box, they face up each other. Yeah. And you can tell they're trying to int intimidate in each other. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, the, you know, if you can intimidate the enemy, you yeah. have already won the battle. <laughs> That's right. Yep. You know, I, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I like what a Brother Darby said about you cannot pin the blame on the devil because yeah. you yourself do That's it. Right. That actually illustrates Tuesday's lesson, Crucibles of Sin. Mm -hmm. Because once, once we commit sin, there will always be consequences. And so a lot of suffering that we experience most likely are as a result of sin that we have committed. Mm. The Romans 1.18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. The wrath of God here, as I mentioned in the lesson in this verse, is that this is, these are actually the consequences of the sin that we have committed. The simple rule is that God created us and He made these rules for us to live happy and peaceful. And once we violate these rules, we can expect that there will be problems because we have that follow this basic what rules that we should that, that, that God has given us. And so the crucible of sin is that we suffer because as a consequences of the sin that we have committed. But the thing is this. There are times when God can tweak those consequences for our advantage, but there are those times also that He allows us to experience so that we can learn from this, from this mistake. Amen. And so, um, crucibles of sin, for crucible of Satan, basically it's just that Satan himself will just do something extraordinarily painful for us, like you are traveling and suddenly you, you're driving that, what you, 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 you're, you're doing, you're driving good, and then suddenly someone hit you, 
And so maybe this one caused by Satan, but crucible of sin, something that you have caused yourself. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's no one, no one to blame but yourself. But then we should learn from this mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So yeah. the, uh, the other thing to Brother Red is if our own creator, mm -hmm. such a gentleman, and he gave us with the freedom of, of will, mm -hmm. freedom of choice, cannot coerce us, Mm -hmm. You know, do you think God would allow Satan to do that when he himself, the creator, mm -hmm. you know, you have to play by rules, I think. Yeah. But then again, you're talking about Satan. He can do anything. He yeah. thinks he can do anything. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. So that's for uh, Tuesday's lesson. Mm -hmm. Tuesday's lesson already. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we're going into Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is about the crucibles of purification. We'll start with uh, Jeremiah. Actually, the, the whole, the entire, well, from Jeremiah 9 through uh, 9, verse 7 through 16 is what this whole lesson is taken from. But looking at 7, <clears throat> it reads, uh, Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them and try them for how shall I deal with the daughter of my people? <clears throat> and Oswald Chambers writes, If the Spirit of God brings to your mind a word of the Lord that hurts you, you can be sure that there is something in you that he wants to hurt to the point of its death. <clears throat> Not your death. Its death, which means the, the sin. Yep. <clears throat> um, the question is asked, how do you understand the quote and text above? Uh, what has been your own experience with the pains involved in the purification process? So I'm going to ask that to anyone who wants to respond. <clears throat> How do you understand the quote from Oswald Chambers and from the text in Jeremiah? I think that's going to be explained more uh, on Thursday's lesson, at Crucibles of Maturity. But um, we do talked about it last night, right? Yeah. That, that um, it, it is so hard as human beings to think that to even accept that we're going to have problems and trials and tribulations and, you know, horrible experience, especially after the fact that you've surrendered your life, Brother Red, to Christ. We have that natural expectation of everything should be hunky-dory, right? Mm -hmm. But what you just read, Brother uh, Darby, that it must hurt to the point of its death. So whether it's a, a character that we have, mm -hmm. you know, especially pride, mm -hmm. right? And somebody tells you to be humble or, you know, and uh, it's just hard. It is hard. Yeah. So you were saying something last night, Professor <laughs> Farrell, that you yeah, I, didn't quite agree. Not really. I, I think I know what he's trying to say. Uh-huh. Um, because here's, 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 here's how I look at If we have elements in our character mm -hmm. that we ourselves may not know, that God knows, because he's a just God and he wants the best for us, he would allow those elements of character to come out. For example, Peter had issues with Gentiles, right? Yeah. Today we will call that a form of racism, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they didn't want to eat mixed with the Gentiles, maybe for, for whatever reason, right? We're not going to go into that. But how did God basically confront Peter? God gave the Roman centurion a dream, said, go and send for Peter. Peter's up on the roof of his house praying, and guess what happens? The, 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 the dream came through, the Romans were, you know, and he had the dream, God was teaching him, don't call anyone common and clean, right? He said mm -hmm. as, as a, a feast a vessel with all kind of animals. God says to him, kill and eat. And Peter said, no, Lord, I have never eaten anything unclean. All right? So he knew that, that it was not about food. And then God revealed to him, I'm telling you really, don't call people common and unclean. Mm -hmm. The Romans are human beings too. So what I'm trying to say is God allowed Peter to go through an experience that brought out that element of weakness in his character. Mm -hmm. That's different. Now, what he's saying is... Um, be sure that he wants to hurt you to the point of its death, to kill that thing. 
I say, when does it become forcing you to do something? Oh, you're not getting that right, so I'm going to hurt you so that you can know that this thing is bad <clears throat> until you get rid of it. You know, so God actually brings awareness. God allows us to go through our choices. God allows, he will allow us to see, you know, the choices that we make and the consequences that they lead to, even in this life, right? But I can't really say that he is basically forcing me indirectly. Because if he is forcing the will, then that's one of the charges that Satan will raise. You see, I told you, as soon as he tries to be different, he's going to force you. That's who he is. He pretends that he's giving you freedom, but he's taking it back from you in such a way. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was a child, I would pray that, God, may you please help me remove this scene that when I wake up tomorrow, I am no longer envious. Can you just take this out away? Oh, yeah. Just overnight? Yeah, yeah. But that is not how things right. work. Yeah. Otherwise, there will be no freedom of we are freedom of choice. choice. Right. And so God allows us to go through this so for us to recognize our sin, for us to see and to be purified along the process. It's not an overnight thing that mm -hmm. when you wake up, you're, you're, you are no longer what sinful. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, and the other thing too is, <laughs> Each of us are different. Mm -hmm. Each of us go through different crucibles in life, <laughs> That's true. right? So to someone, it might be like, like it, we have children. How many <laughs> children do you have, Professor Farrell? Three. Three. Uh, Darby, you have two, two. right? Two, yep. mm -hmm. I have a total of three. And each child is different. Mm -hmm. To one child, all you need to say, hey, this is what I want done. That's it. And it's done. <laughs> My youngest child or, you know, your other child would be like, you could tell this person, your child, over and over again and threaten him even, and he still won't do it, mm -hmm. you know? So in our walk in, with Christ, could it be there are times that we're given crucibles that God knows that we could mm -hmm. overcome mm -hmm. that might not be the same crucible for someone mm -hmm. who finally learned from just Another person telling them, you know, Sister Teresa, did you know that you have the habit of doing this? Mm -hmm. You right. know? That's and different. you just say, oh, I'm so sorry. But you could have somebody, you say something like that, I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> you know? So I, I just wanted to bring that yeah. up to your it's, point. It's, it's very important because when you do it from an element of force and fear, mm. what happens if that fear is gone? Like, for example, um, well, Satan has no fear, apparently. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's not true because he did express fear when Jesus was around. But yeah. the point I'm trying to make is let's, take, let's go back to the old days when people believed that they had to pray and appease, not pray, but appease this God. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I have to bring the sacrifice to the mountain so that rain will come. Because mm -hmm. if I don't do that, the rain God will not give me rain. And after yeah. a while, no crops. they stop, they stop, they stop. Hold a second. We didn't carry the, the sacrifice to the rain God, but we got rain. <laughs> then guess what happened? Oh, we can get rain anyway, so let's yeah. stop solving it. So it's like that. If we, if we feel that we're doing something out of fear, when that fear is removed, that that thing is gone, then hey, we just stop solving God. Mm. And that's not what it's about. So as you yeah. said, it's, bit, it's you know, through the process of reasoning, maturity, this is the better option. Here's the reason why. Yeah. And then we choose and say, oh, that's where this would lead? Okay, I'll choose this way. Yeah. I wrote, and my response to this question was, <clears throat> excuse me, that, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. <clears throat> um, for God to get me to see my sins for what they are mm -hmm. and to take them seriously, mm -hmm. he has to allow unsettling things to happen. Oh, to get okay. you out of your comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, to get me out of, the, out of the comfort zone. Um, so, I can make... I'm sorry, I can't read my own writing. <laughs> so, I can make the changes needed to get back on track. Mm. Better to deny self now than to live a life of sin and deal with the consequences later. later. Wow, that's oh, powerful. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, powerful. It's good that you have that realization that you mm -hmm. could do that yeah. mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but god knows how much to give you how much crucibles to give you mm -hmm. not to break you yeah. right mm -hmm. it is how to uh, build oh, you to, to improve you what did i say earlier to to change you to the better to develop you to grow in his character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right 
So it goes on to uh, furthermore into uh, Jeremiah 9, uh, verses 7 through 16. Uh, God says that he will refine and test or melt Judah and Jerusalem in these verses. Mm -hmm. uh, what two reasons does God give for this and how will that refining happen? So uh, the two things that God, uh, the two reasons that God gave for this is because one, um, they forsook God's law. Mm -hmm. And two, they did not obey him, mm -hmm. which I kind of find it's almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he will not, uh, he, uh, he will set hardships in their paths. This is speaking of the, the Jewish people mm -hmm. of the time. <clears throat> they would drink poison water and eat bitter food, and he would scatter them and put them to the sword. Basically, uh, the hardships of war. You know, I mean, we look at the history of the, the Jewish nation, um, especially during the times of the exile, <clears throat> uh, and then the return to, to Jerusalem, um, and then the, the, the period of, basically since, ever since their exile into um, Babylon, Mm -hmm. They have always been under another ruler. Yep. <clears throat> you know, first it was the Babylonians and the Persians and the then the Hellenists and then the Romans. Mm -hmm. um, and finally when they as as a as a nation when they rejected Christ, <clears throat> uh, Jerusalem was destroyed and they were scattered, just as God had foretold. Mm -hmm. Um you would and, think that they would have learned through those yeah. <laughs> kingdoms and, you know, that they were, had dominion uh, over them. Yeah. And so I think for salvation for them, no longer came as a nation, but became individual. Mm, you know? And Jesus came. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, throughout their 2,000 years of uh, being scattered, you know, they've, they've, they've been persecuted mm -hmm. over a over and over and over again. The Holocaust was not the first time. <clears throat> There's been many Holocausts throughout Europe's history with the Jews. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's so sad to, to see <clears throat> what God had spoken of. You know, that was their, that was their test. That was the period crucible. of refinement. Yeah, their yeah. crucible. <clears throat> uh, and ultimately, we can learn from their lesson is, you know, that as they they didn't learn, as, uh, as Ate said, they didn't learn mm. from all of what, got, uh, what had transpired. And we should not, as Christians today, we should not follow in, the, in those footsteps. We need to see that what God is saying to the church today, <clears throat> you know, don't forsake me, obey my law keep my commandments, love me. Um, otherwise, he might scatter us, you know? We read the consequences. <clears throat> yeah. the, the, um, the hope that I see in the, the story of Israel, all those years of, uh, of being uh, domineered by other kingdoms, is that God is a relentless God, mm -hmm. you know? God will not give up on, on us. He won't dismiss us and say, oh, Brother Darby, forget him. You know, he created us. He loves us so much with an unfailing, measureless love, you know, that he won't let go as long as we don't. Mm -hmm. That's right? right. That's right. Bro yeah. Professor? That's, that's, that's very interesting, Darby. Um, as you, you guys are talking, I'm there reflecting, and what came to my mind is, Isaiah 24, 24, where God essentially, through the earlier prophet Isaiah, essentially summarized the same thing. And uh, Isaiah 24 is seen as a, uh, a, a, from Isaiah 24 forward, really our, our time. It's really about our time, you know. Mm. And he says here, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because... They have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. 
Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are bond, and few men are left. Um, this is really, uh, civil society is based on laws. Mm -hmm. yes. If we don't have laws and people don't respect them, what's going to happen? We have chaos, chaos. right? Yep. And when we look at all the shooting that's taken place, I know in Japan they shot the... Um, the Former uh, Prime Minister. The Prime Minister, <laughs> and the Japanese were very shocked. And I heard one of them say on the radio, <clears throat> well, we're not in America, what's going on here? In other yeah. words, this is, this is something that's common in America up to what happened here recently in Chicago. A young man, 17 years old, wow. right? Decided that he was gonna shoot at people, right? This is something that we see all the time. But here's my point. If we in our schools and our churches tell people not to respect the laws of God, mm -hmm. there is a law that says thou shall not kill, mm -hmm. respect human life. Thou shall not steal, respect human property and, and material things, you know? Thou shall not be a false witness. Don't tell lies about people so that they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is what he's talking about. When we stop obeying the fundamental rules of civilization, right? If we don't respect those, we're not going to respect the laws of the land. Yep. And we are going to basically think, take things into our hand and there will be much chaos and so forth. So this is what the prophet is saying. It's not just like, you know, hey, um, oh, so, 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 so. It's about... If you go against these things, what you're going against is civil society. And very quickly, I know time is running by. Um, I remember David, and I, for a while, in Psalm 119, I, 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 in one verse, David is literally saying, Lord, it is time for you to arise. They avoid your law. In other words, Lord, you have to come in, put an end to this stuff, because now that they don't respect the laws anymore, they're going to just destroy each other. Mm. And then in a few verses after, guess what David is doing? He is crying. <clears throat> He's saying, when I see what they have done to your law, rivers of waters come from my eye. He is emotional. Why? He knows when you disrespect the fundamental. All society has these basic laws that we call the Ten Commandments. All society that I know of, murder is still wrong. Stealing is still wrong. Right? Mm -hmm. Adultery is still wrong and those things. Right? And when we, when we disregard those, what we're mm -hmm. doing is disregarding the very rules for our existence, coexistence, mm -hmm. and therefore a lot of issues are going to happen. So David is crying because he knows what the implication is. Very Amen. good, Abby. Yeah. So uh, towards the end of our lesson, I'd like us to spend more time on the, the hope, the, the cheery things, you okay. know? Mm -hmm. So I think, Professor Farrell, you have Thursday's lesson, the crucibles of maturity, and I think it's specifically talking about spiritual maturity, maturity. right? Yes. All right, yes. go ahead. So, um, uh, hopefully, as Christians, as we go through the crucible, we learn that those things, we should be mature enough mm. to see the benefits and of, of all these things, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says all things work together for good. Good. Yep. And First Corinthians one thirteen. Um, I'm going to read that one, 1 Corinthians 10, beg your pardon, 13. We, we quoted that one last night. It says, They had no temptation taken you but such as, uh, such as is common to man. In other words, just know that you are not the only person on mm -hmm. earth. There are about, what, 8 billion more people on this earth? You're not the only one who's experienced it. Mm -hmm. yep. okay? But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. In other words, God is not going to allow you to be tried beyond what you can bear. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. He may not take it away, but he's going to give you. But notice what it says. But will with the temptation also make a what? A way of Amen. escape that ye may be able to bear it. Yes. So a part of Christian maturity is to say, all right, God's in this with me. And I know at some point he's going to make help me through it. And in the end, I'll be better off. Right? That's Amen. one thing. And we have the experience of Paul, right? Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, and I read that one. It says, Unless I should ex be exalted above measure, by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest mm -hmm. I be exalted above measure. Wow. So Paul had a thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. right? 
some people speculate as to what it is. He did not say specifically. Some people felt it was the, his vision that was going. Paul in that same chapter said, I prayed three times <laughs> asking God, Lord, remove this thorn in the flesh. Now, think about this. This Paul is the same Paul when that young man fell out of the window, died, Paul brought him back to life. Yep. A God brought him back to life through Paul. This is the same Paul who people were taking aprons off of him, touching it to other people, and they were healing. This is the same Paul, mm -hmm. right? They stoned him, left him for dead, and, and he just stood up and started walking again, right? In other words, he went through a storm, a hurricane, as we would say, and survived it. I have a neighbor. I'm not sure if my sisters are listening. Right, there was no Cyrus who yeah. went through a hurricane in a boat and never came out. Wow. That's the last we heard of him. Right? Paul survived a hurricane. But now he has something that's happening within his body and he's praying to God, asking God to remove it, and God says, My grace My grace is sufficient for you. And and Paul says, No, oh, so God is allowing this to remain in me so I will be humble. Why? Because what would you say, listen, I'd be so t telling all, talking about, oh, you know what? I met God on the road to Damascus, man. I, come, let me tell you my experience. You know, I had a vision. I saw God like this. And he'll be so excited. And now when he goes to speak, it's like, hey, I'm Paul. I'm in the room. Be quiet. Then that pride comes in, right? Mm -hmm. And Paul says, I have all this revelation, all this contact with God. I heal people. I do all these different things. But God had to leave something in me to make me humble. Amen. So Amen. spiritual maturity, the, the crucible of maturity to has to do, can you see the good in what you're suffering as Paul did? Mm. I don't know if anybody yeah, else. I also like to compare Thursday's lesson with Monday's lesson. In mm -hmm. Thursday's lesson, crucibles of maturity, mm -hmm. uh, Paul experienced this crucible not because he committed a specific sin, mm -hmm. but to prevent him from sinning in the future. Mm -hmm. While on Monday's lesson, the crucible of sin, it, you experience those suffering as a consequence of a sin, sin. that you have committed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like different angles of crucibles. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing too, uh, we're talking about maturity, be it spiritual, uh, physical or spiritual. How many times when we see a child, it may be developmentally delayed, right? Do you have this feeling of like, What's the matter with you? Do you ever come up to them and say, what's the matter with you? Why are you not growing? We don't have that attitude. You know, if anything, we have that attitude, oh, poor, poor kid, you know? But how about somebody that we meet, somebody in church even, mm -hmm. <laughs> may not have reached, or I myself have not reached that spiritual maturity. Mm. You don't see anyone coming up and you know, says, what's the matter with you, Teresa? Why are you not spiritually mature yet? All these years you've been coming to church, you know? But the other thing that I really is a, a thought-provoking um, idea was um, whatever, whatever crucible we're going through, what if God tells you whether it's healing of some sort of disease or even Paul, it was not a bad thing. I mean, he wanted to be able to see better, to minister to people. He was just asking God, take away this thorn in my flesh, you know? Well, what if the answer of God is, my grace is sufficient for you? Meaning, mm -hmm. I don't think God is going to take this pain away. So our, the question there is, are we spiritually mature enough to say, okay, dear Lord, whatever you lead me, because... You promise you're always with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I always liken it to giving birth. <laughs> um, I know it's painful. I have always, I've had three children that I've given birth to, and every single one was not an easy one. Mm -hmm. But the fact that my husband is there holding my hands, assuring me, it's okay, just a few more minutes, a few more minutes, and the baby is going to be out the baby's going to be here. So that's what Jesus is telling us, you know, that it doesn't matter what's, what's, what, what life throws at you. I'm with you until the end of time. Mm -hmm. At this time, we could probably have some uh, yeah. uh, last, min last uh, final thoughts. Professor Farrell. Yeah. 
So um, I, I think, as you said, for us, we need to be able to put our experiences in perspective, mm. right? To remember that everyone in this world will face, uh, are facing their own personal crucibles. This is a wall of sin, right? And Jesus also gives us the, um, the way forward. How do we survive? He says, if you keep my words, I will keep you during the hour of trial that will come to try the whole world. Jesus himself, right? And something very important as Paul, we had just written about Paul. Paul realized that it was not God's will for him to be healed of whatever, mm. right? So knowing the will of God, operating based on the will of God will give us satisfaction and strength and confidence that we'll make it true. Remember Jesus? Mm -hmm. When Jesus was going through his own crucible yep. of crucifixion, yep. right? What Get did he summoning. pray for? Yep. He said, Lord, if it is possible, possible. let this cup, let this crucible be gone, <laughs> all right? Yeah. But nevertheless, not my will, will but your, your will. will be done. Did God Amen. remove the crucible? No, nope. he went through it. So like he, Jesus had the maturity. Paul had the maturity. And for us, First John chapter 5, I'd like to read my, first, my last comment. First John chapter 5, verse 14. The key thing is, in addition to knowing the word of God and doing the word of God, notice what Paul, uh, John says. Verse 14 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Mm -hmm. That if we ask anything according to his will, Amen. he <clears throat> hears us. Amen. Amen. So <laughs> knowing the will of God in all of the storm, if we ask anything, he is going to hear us. If it's not according to his will, he technically is hearing us and saying no. Yeah. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Don't worry about that little thing. Yeah. Right? I have the sufficiency of my grace is all that you need to Amen. make it through this storm. I have a uh, commentator <clears throat> that's joined us on YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I somehow feel his pain. I'm not sure if it's a he or she. Mm -hmm. uh, Pama, it seems that it's a never-ending crucible when one is suffering from a genetic condition mm -hmm. with no possibility of healing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like <clears throat> chronic pain. You know, it's real. It's real. We feel that, you know. But are we able to... I've worked in a hospice company for about a year, and this intractable pain, you know, that you're constantly wishing that every, every, every day, you're constantly wishing for that, that you would be somehow pain-free. But... Um, and, and it's hard. It's hard. You have something to Yeah, so I just want to say, you know, as, as, um, as Christians, um, to be a mature Christian, <clears throat> to know that uh, we should not be surprised by these mm. things. Uh, yep. We need to always be alert that things can come at a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be of a sober mind mm -hmm. as well. Uh, basically, we must always assume there is danger everywhere, but not fall prey to the fear it brings. Mm -hmm. Because God promises to restore us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> That's true. Yeah. That yeah. To, to, to piggyback on that, uh, the Lord has promised us that while we suffered a little while, mm. He will restore us, just like Brother Darby has said, and that He will make us strong, firm, and steadfast. Yeah. That gives me hope because mm -hmm. it says little while. Mm -hmm. You know, little while. <laughs> we will suffer, yeah. The <laughs> suffer is there. Mm -hmm. And he's not lying that we're going we're we're not going to suffer, but little while. Mm -hmm. I find comfort there. And always this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Always remember this. This Amen. too shall pass. Amen. Amen. Our brother Sebastian. Yeah, I was just saying in, in response to our um our dear uh, listener, um, that's really tough because mm -hmm. that's something that you can't change. That's right. We may, at this point, and depending on the problem, we might be able to do some sort of, you know, uh, suppression of certain genes to yeah. make pain less. I think one of the things that we can do, as whoever is going to pray, is to pray for him that yeah. maybe we can find the technology. But more importantly, what I do know from the experience of Stephen, how do you stone a person to death? It's yeah. better to die by someone shooting. You don't have to experience the pain. 
When you stone someone to death, you're dying slowly and you feel every stone, all right, until your breath is gone. Yeah. All right? So that pain is real. So God gave him something that while there was stone in him, he rise above the pain. Mm -hmm. He was able to pray for his people who were stone in him. Mm -hmm. How do you get beyond that, right? Yeah. This is, so there's something special that God can do for our, our dear reader, our mm -hmm. dear um, viewer. Right, that you know, by way of suppression, right? Yeah, the Bible tells us that God can recreate our mm. minds, and this meaning He can suppress what needs to be suppressed, and so forth. Yeah. So, Pain management, it's, not in, yeah. it's not impossible that God can produce some relief for Him, so we should pray for Him as well. Yeah, and so we have two people we have uh, Jim that's uh, joined us from uh, um, our uh, website, church website. He uh, is from Malin, Oregon. Mm -hmm. So please pray for him. They had an accident. And also uh, Pama. I think it's you, Professor Farrell, that's uh, going to... Is it you, brother? Um, who's doing the closing prayer? I can. Yeah, all right. right. Okay. okay, I can pray. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Loving Father, thank you, Lord, for the wonderful lesson that we have just studied. Thank you, Father, for the promise that while... We suffer for a little while. You will restore us. You will make us strong and firm and steadfast. Father in heaven, we would like to pray for uh, our listeners, those who co commented about uh, their uh, sickness, Father. We pray that you will give him or her the hope that you will be with her or him all through this, uh, this suffering. Father in heaven, we pray also for Jim. Uh, May you please continue to be with him and his family as they go through the suffering. Thank you so much, Lord, for your love and for your promise that you will always be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone, for studying with us. Next week, we continue the new quarter, lesson number three, the birdcage. So tune in. We'll find out what's being referred to here as the birdcage. And our young adults are leading out. We want to... Uh, remind you once again of Orlando Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church mission, that's to know Christ and make him known.